diving into history, we find ourselves in the Middle Ages, where the chastity belt allegedly made its debut. Picture it. A time of knights and castles, of courtly love and chivalry. But nestled within these romanticized notions is the chastity belt, a device shrouded in mystery and misconception. Many believe that chastity belts were widely used during this era, often associated with knights going off to war, leaving their wives locked up to ensure their fidelity. This image, while enduring, might not hold up under scrutiny. You see, while the Middle Ages were indeed a time of strict moral codes, there's little concrete evidence to suggest that chastity belts were as prevalent as popular culture would have us believe. Let's delve a bit deeper. The chastity belt as we know it is a device made of metal designed to prevent sexual intercourse. It's often depicted in art and literature of the time, but strangely enough, there are few historical records or physical artifacts to corroborate their widespread use. This has led some historians to propose a rather intriguing idea. What if the chastity belt was more of a myth than a reality? Consider this. The chastity belt could have been a symbolic representation, a metaphorical device used in stories and art to convey the ideals of purity and faithfulness. In an age where symbolism played a vital role in religious and social narratives, this theory doesn't seem so far-fetched. To add to this, the practicalities of wearing such a device raise questions. Given the hygiene and health risks, not to mention the discomfort, it's hard to imagine that chastity belts were a commonplace reality for the women of the Middle Ages. So, it seems the chastity belt might not have been as common as we thought during the Middle Ages. But, as we peel back the layers of history, it's fascinating to ponder the myths and realities that have shaped our understanding of this peculiar artifact. Moving forward to the Renaissance and Enlightenment periods, the chastity belt continues to raise questions. As we delve into these periods, we find chastity belts cropping up in interesting places. Literature and art of the time frequently mention or depict these belts, but not quite in the way you might expect. Instead of being portrayed as oppressive tools, they're often presented in a humorous or satirical light. Take, for instance, the vivid and comical illustrations found in the works of German satirist Johann Fischer. His drawings feature outlandishly complex chastity belts, poking fun at the very idea of such contraptions. Similarly, in the realm of literature, French author Francois Rabelais makes a jest of chastity belts in his satirical masterpiece. Gargantua and Pantagruel. But what does this mean? Were chastity belts during the Renaissance and Enlightenment periods just a joke? Well, some historians suggest that chastity belts during these times were largely a fictional concept. They propose that these belts were not a common reality of everyday life, but rather a metaphorical tool used to represent female fidelity. Imagine, if you will, a society grappling with the concept of virtue and morality. In such a context, the chastity belt becomes a powerful symbol. It's a visual and dramatic representation of the societal expectation of women to remain pure and faithful. However, this is not to say that physical chastity belts didn't exist at all during these periods. Some isolated instances of their use have been documented, but these cases were the exception rather than the rule and the belts were often used as a form of punishment or control, rather than a standard practice. In essence, the chastity belt was more of a cultural and literary device, a symbol of the societal norms and expectations of the time, rather than a widely used physical restraint. As we can see, the chastity belt often served more as a symbol than a physical reality during the Renaissance and Enlightenment periods. As we journey into the 19th and 20th centuries, the role of the chastity belt begins to change. As the Victorian era dawned, a new, rather peculiar use for chastity belts emerged. This was an era marked by a collective societal obsession with morality, propriety, and sexual restraint. Among the many practices that sprung from this obsession was the use of chastity belts to prevent masturbation which was then widely believed to cause both mental and physical illnesses. Yes, you heard it right. Chastity belts, once a symbol of fidelity and honor, were now seen as a tool for promoting health and well-being. This radical shift in perception was largely due to the prevailing medical theories of the time. 
Masturbation, labeled as self-abuse, was deemed responsible for a wide range of conditions, from epilepsy to insanity and even death. Chastity belts, with their restrictive design, were seen as an effective deterrent. The 20th century saw a continuation of the use of chastity belts, but with yet another shift in context and meaning. This time around, they were adopted by some feminists as a symbol of the fight against sexual oppression. The chastity belt, a device that once represented control and ownership over women's bodies, was now being used to challenge and protest against patriarchal norms and expectations. This reclamation of the chastity belt served as a powerful metaphor for the feminist struggle. It highlighted the enduring battle for bodily autonomy and the right to sexual self-determination. The chastity belt, once a tool of oppression, became a symbol of resistance and empowerment. In modern times, the chastity belt has taken on new meanings and uses, far removed from its origins in medieval symbolism. From a tool of control, to a health device, to a symbol of rebellion, the chastity belt has indeed had a fascinating journey through the annals of history. To wrap up, let's revisit the main points about the chastity belt's intriguing history. Our journey began in the Middle Ages, when the chastity belt emerged not as a physical device, but as a symbolic one. It was a concept that represented the idea of marital fidelity, a metaphorical representation of a husband's control over his wife's chastity. Then, we moved into the Renaissance and Enlightenment periods, where the chastity belt took on a more tangible form in literature and art. It was depicted in paintings and tales, often with a humorous or satirical twist. The chastity belt became a popular trope, a symbol of the absurd lengths to which people would go to control the sexual behavior of women. Next, we shifted our attention to the Victorian era, where the chastity belt was presented as a medical device. This was a period marked by an obsessive concern with health and hygiene. The chastity belt was touted as a tool to prevent masturbation, which was believed to cause a host of physical and mental ailments. The reality, however, was that its use was not widespread and was mostly confined to asylums and institutions. In the final leg of our journey, we explored the chastity belt's symbolic use in the 21st century. Today, it's often used in protests and performance art as a powerful symbol of the ongoing fight against gender inequality and sexual violence. In essence, the chastity belt has transformed over centuries from a metaphorical concept to a tangible object, and then back to a potent symbol. Its history is a testament to the evolution of societal attitudes towards women's bodies and sexuality. From medieval symbolism to modern-day protests, the history of the chastity belt is as complex as it is fascinating. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey.